Good evening, everybody, and happy Thanksgiving. This is meteorologist Andrew Pinero. So I wanted to get just a quick video up there, nothing too much, just a quick little Thanksgiving discussion, and then uh, just a quick little weather discussion, nothing too long. But uh, first thing I want to say with Thanksgiving, I really hope that everybody is still partaking, or still doing the social distancing. Just because it is still serious, it is worse now than it has been throughout this entire pandemic. So back in March and April and May when we were all shut down and quarantined, it wasn't as bad as it is now. Not to say that it was, it was a walk in the park then. It was still bad and I do have friends in the medical field and it's really bad then and it's even worse now. So, I really hope you guys are taking this seriously, wearing your masks when you're going out into public, and if you're having Thanksgiving meals, and you are bringing people in to practice social distancing, even within your house. Otherwise, just really try and stay with your pod, or your main group that you live with. It may be something we have to sacrifice this year, but it's something that we have to do to protect everybody. So beyond that, Thanksgiving's really a time that I take to reflect. What am I thankful for? I want to know what you guys are thankful for in the comments. So definitely put those down in the comments below. What are you guys thankful for? I know 2020 was, I don't, I don't do this too often, it was a shitty year. Yes, it was a shitty year. It still is a shitty year. But, um... Let's really take time to reflect on what we have to be thankful for. So I am thankful for my family. I am thankful. I haven't put a video up since this, but uh, I am thankful for my fiance, Meg, that you have seen on the channel before. She said, yes, I'm getting married. I'm very thankful for her and all the support she has given me when we're going through the issues I'm having with my work life balance there, just because I am working from home. It is something I'm doing. It's basically tech support calls. I hate it. I do not like it at all. From what I've seen and from feedback I've received, I'm good at it, but I hate it. I do not like it whatsoever. And it's just, it's frustrating because. I feel trapped. I feel like I have to do this in order to maintain my my livelihood because the work from home stuff, we if if I decide not to do it, then what am I going to do? Nothing. And then I don't I I, ru I lose my medical because I have uh, type 1 diabetes. I need that. So I'd lose that. I lose a, st a steady source of income. So I just have to kind of just tolerate it. And that's what I've been doing every day is just punching in, doing the thing, tolerating it as best as I can. But it's it's hard because I hate it. And this is tying into a new Bon Jovi song that came out. And in there, it's, if you can't do what you do, then do what you can. I can't do what I love to do, which is my main job, which I'm still, that's st still technically my position. But I'm doing other stuff from home now. So if I can't do what I do, I do what I can to survive. Which is basically what I'm feeling like now is just, just got to survive. And we will get through this. We will get through this. It may take time. And there's hope in the future with a lot of change coming, which is great. But we got to wait for that. It's going to take another three to six months until we get some source, some sense of normality. And we're not really going to be fully normal until a year or even more. So it's going to take time, but we will get through this. We have been through a lot as a country before in the 200 plus years that the country has been around. So we'll get through this now. We'll get through this as a, just a human race, just because it's affecting everybody. Okay, now beyond that, transitioning, weather discussion. All right, so for the weather, let me bring up here. We're going to start tonight with 
just a quick little look at what's going on in the radar. So we had some rain to start out the day in the northeast today, and it was some heavy, heavy rain. I was watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and I was seeing some pretty heavy rain out there. And it was weird because, well, based on where I am, I can see the rain and then see it happen on TV, which is kind of funny. But uh, that's, that's what we had this morning. We can kind of still see that right out here. That is where we are. That's the tail end of the rain. And then we have a lot of this clear air behind it. But will it stay? We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But just want to take a quick little look at the atmosphere. That was the radar. This is the satellite nighttime microphysics. Let me put this in motion here. So you can see the different layers of the clouds here. This is basically visible satellite at night. It's not infrared. It's not water vapor. This is visible satellite at night. And we can see right there, that's kind of where the end of that radar return was. That's that rain, the clouds behind it, and then we got some clearing. And then it looks like we have some either fog there or some low-level clouds. But that's what we're dealing with now, which is really not that bad. It's very calm, but it's also cold. As of this recording, I have 46 degrees. And today, I know we hit about 63 or 64 where I am, so that's quite a dip. And when we take a look at the surface analysis here as well, we can see this was earlier. This wasn't uh, the most recent as of the recording. So this is about 8.40 p.m. Eastern Time. This is 1.40 Z. And I'm recording this at about, what is it, 9.45 so it's about an hour out of date, but we're still seeing that's the cold front there where the end of that rain's making its way out. And we have this high pressure in the middle, but then we got a couple of rounds of some other systems coming through. And when we take a look at the wind map here, this is kind of what we're seeing here as well. So we have the high pressure with this kind of clockwise rotation we, we see right there. And we do see also the stronger winds behind the cold front here. And these are northwesterly winds that's bringing the cold air out of Canada. But we can also see that boundary right there, that front, which if I go back to here, let's take a look to see if we can line it up. So there's Dallas, Texas. That's a little bit over there. So that is kind of probably what this is right there. Well, that's really the biggest feature in the whole uh, radar image right now. Besides just the stronger winds coming down. And these winds, when we take a look here, we're seeing 6 miles per hour. It's not that high. 9, I saw an 11 there. So we're say, seeing, say, between 5 and 15 miles per hour northwesterly winds throughout most of the northeast there until you get a little bit more inland, and then it calms down because that's kind of right where the high is. And when you're right underneath the high, that's, is, that's what um, causes the calm winds when it's right overhead there. And now the last little bit, we'll just take a look at the three forecast models and some uh, MOS data. But with the GFS here, there's that rain clearing out. Here comes that high pressure. The 540 line starts to dip a little bit going through. This is Saturday, so Friday looks pretty calm as well. The isobars, they're far away. So when that's the case, that's when we have calmer winds, kind of what we're seeing at the moment. High comes in, but as the high starts coming in through Saturday, the isobar is there, they get closer, which means we're going to be seeing maybe some stronger winds. Not a lot when it's, it's not very close at the moment, but still maybe some breezy conditions for your day on Saturday. This is bringing in here a chance of some mixed precipitation in those higher elevation areas up near Albany but not a lot, and this is later in your day on Saturday. Then when we go into Sunday, there's another high coming through. Sunday looks okay there. 
And then, going into Monday, this is breezy. This is where the isobars are very close, so we're going to see some windy conditions here with this. Kind of nor'easter, because there's the low. We have counterclockwise uh, rotation. And if we are seeing winds come from the northeast this way, it's a nor'easter, but... It's it's not exactly giving us northeasterly winds. It's giving us north uh, southeasterly winds through this because it's too inland. It's not really a coastal system, so I really wouldn't call this a nor'easter. But it's still going to be a pretty intense system as well. That's going into your day Monday, and it's going to start later in the day on Monday, starting with some showers, turning into some periods of rain, heavy rain in there. And just because of how intense this is, I can't 100% rule out a chance of thunder either. So that is a chance, not a high chance. And then behind this, we do have a weather phenomenon called wraparound snow. It doesn't happen here because the moisture pretty much makes its way out here on the GFS. But there's the low. And as this colder air is coming down from Canada... And wrapping around the front side now of the low pressure system. There could be some flurries here. And this is going into Tuesday afternoon. Especially going into like Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania there. But for the, the tri-state region, we probably won't see any flurries through this. It'll just pretty much be rain there. And then that's going through Tuesday into a Wednesday. Wednesday looks like it's still going to be cold and windy. And then going into next Thursday, a week out now, we do have another system here. Now, this could be a bit more of your more uh, traditional definition of a nor'easter, but I don't think this one really is because it's not a coastal system coming up the east coast. We do have the northeasterly winds coming down here as we're spinning around the counterclockwise rotation of the low pressure system all right so then the icon let's take a look through here Ooh, i got the wrong one up so far in agreement calmer through saturday this one really doesn't have any flurries actually a little bit it had a little bit of flurries in there later in the day saturday very north like the new york canada border then the high kicks in so sunday looks calmer too so for the tri-state region, specifically right in here around New York City, it actually doesn't look like a too bad of a weekend for Thanksgiving weekend. A little bit colder, but still it's a little bit above where we should be at for this time of the year. And then going into Monday here, there's our system. So kind of just like the GFS so with the icon now. We're going into the day on Monday. Now, this is more intense. The only difference here, three-hour average precipitation versus the GFS was a six-hour average precipitation. But still, this is pretty intense rain there. That's where, especially right here, this is starting to form what looks like a cold front. And I, again, can't completely rule out the chance of thunder, but there's not high chance of it. Then on the back side, once we get that wraparound situation, again, for that New York City area, it doesn't really bring in the moisture too much. It's kind of close going into the western border of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. But still, just maybe some lingering showers overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Those isobars are really tight. So that's going to be a... Um, a pretty intense wind situation going into Wednesday. And then Thursday next week, still windy, but then there's the end of the uh, the icon. But also there's kind of the end of the windy situation going into late next Thursday. But again, we could be seeing another little system there. And then the very last model we're take a look at is the NAM. And again, this does not... Oh, this one is just coming out now. Let's go back to the right one here. So let's just take a look at what it's showing for the next couple of days here, because it only goes 84 hours out. So going through Friday and Saturday, 
There's that lower pressure gradient, so not as windy. Going into Saturday, the pressure gradient does increase, but we have high pressure. So that means it's going to be windy, but fairly clear. And then Saturday into Sunday here, looks fairly clear as well. Just if, um, if you're more north near the New York-Canada border or the, or the U.S.-Canada border through those couple of states, you could be seeing some, uh, some flurries. Then going in, that's the end of the, uh, the NAM is that 84 hour. It's kind of in agreement with the other forecast models that we've been seeing just because it looks like it's really in about the same spot as the ICON and the GFS that we just looked at. But um, that's, that, that's it for the NAM. So my thinking is the worst day of the upcoming week is going to be Monday. So you want to keep that in mind. If you do happen to have to go out to work or anything like that, and you're not working from home like me, it's going to be rainy, it's going to be windy, and it's going to get a little bit cold too. With that chance of a thunderstorm kind of mixed in there. But again, not a high chance. And the last thing is just temperatures. We'll take a look here around Newark. So right here, we're going to look at the temperature for the highs and the lows. So Friday's high, 55, and then we go 51, 52, 55. So it's still a little bit cooler going into Saturday and Sunday there with 51 and 52, but it's still slightly above where we should be at for this time of the year, and it's going to be fairly calm until later in the day, Saturday into Sunday, where that isobar pressure gradient increases a little bit. And we're going to see about the same thing when we take a look at some of these others. Like here is Islip, where we're seeing, again, it's going to be a little bit colder than Newark just because Islip is on Long Island near the ocean. So we're seeing, uh, what we got, 39, 32, 37 here. So it is going to be colder. That's about where we should be at for this time of the year. So Long Island's going to be a little bit more seasonal than going into uh, white Plains here, we have 48, 45, 47, so about average. So that's what we're going to be seeing over those next couple of days. So to recap, it looks like we're going to have some fairly clear weather for tomorrow through the weekend, maybe some little lake effect shower or flurry that we could see, but that's really about it. And especially along the U.S.-Canada border there with New York and going east. That's where there could be a flurry chance over the weekend, like sat late Saturday going into the overnight hours. Sunday, the pressure gradient did increase a little bit, so we may see a slightly breezier condition for Sunday. But overall, Thanksgiving weekend is not going to be bad. So if you do happen to go out for any Black Friday deals into the physical stores, you really shouldn't have a problem with weather in the Northeast. Now, for Monday, that's going to be a usually Cyber Monday. So if you are partaking in Cyber Monday, which you really should be taking partaking in Cyber all the time right now to avoid the stores. But uh, for Monday, it doesn't look like it's going to be a good day. It actually looks like it's going to be the worst day of the week coming up. Rainy, windy, then getting cold. Again, maybe a slight chance, very slight chance of a rumble of thunder. After that, it looks like it's going to linger overnight Monday into the first part of your day on Tuesday. Overnight Tuesday, it clears out a little bit, so Wednesday looks okay. But then Thursday later in the day, we do have another system coming through. So that's an overall recap, and it looks like these temperatures are going to be about seasonal with highs in the upper 40s to the lower maybe mid 50s and these overnight lows are really going to be let me take a look here not terrible we're going to be seeing the 30s once you get a little bit uh, more near the coast like long island the low 40s if you're a bit more inland new york city and a little bit more west of that so that pretty much wraps up this video. I wanted to keep this kind of like under 20 minutes for a little week-long weather discussion there. So uh, again, happy Thanksgiving out there. This is my first video as an engaged man. I have never, this is something brand new. So yay. Meg will hopefully be on at some point. We're gonna try and see if we could do something, especially with small talk. 
We had two episodes of that podcast out in the beginning of the year, then the whole shutdown happened. Maybe we'll do something again, but we shall see. Thank you all for watching. For all of those that are very loyal to the channel, avid viewers, I really appreciate you guys. Anybody that's new, feel free if you want to get some more weather content. We also do gaming content, car videos. I got a, oh, I got a doozy of a car video coming up very soon, probably next week. So if you want to see that, hit that little subscribe button below and the little bell icon right next to that so you get notified whenever I upload a video like this or I do go live. Have a great rest of your Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy holiday season now. This is meteorologist Andrew Panero. I'll see you all in the next video.